more like Monday Night Rad. Am I right? <laughs> Welcome to the Wrestle Talk <laughs> podcast review of Monday Night Raw. I am Luke and DAD. This is Dan Layton, your jam that jam, you know the truth. And please do press the subscribe button. Give us a little thumbs up. Leave a comment down below with what you thought of what many are saying is an all timer episode of Monday Night Raw, featuring what some say, perhaps this is recency bias. The greatest angle to ever close an episode of Raw. Certainly the greatest angle to close an episode of Raw in the past 10 years. Like, that, that at the would, very least. At the very least, I would say it's probably the best angle to close out Raw in a good 15 years. Yeah, I mean, it was a, a brilliant, brilliant piece of drama and an exercise in restraint. I said on Twitter that I'm going to use that word an awful lot. Mm. Um this this episode because when you go into writing anything when you produce a show when you do anything when it's a bit of drama you you're looking for this result you, you want to tease things have discipline not give away the goose too soon to ultimately lead to a bit of you know intense drama right at the end there i thought this was this was a brilliant episode of television not only was it a great ending segment dan it also just once again proved me right Swearing in blood makes wrestling better. Swe Please do leave a Sw comment swearing, down below. Swe swearing in blood makes wrestling better, but restraint Wrestle makes blood it and swearing better. It, it just makes it better. Leave a comment down below with what you thought of this episode. And if you're watching us live, join in our wonderful SWAF Nation and let us know what you thought of this episode. I feel like most of these shows happen with you. Like you, you know, you know those stories of like the backyard wrestling kids who come in with a light bulb stuck in their head. That was you. That, that was me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I stole yeah. light bulbs from school. Don't do that, kids. Um, <laughs> and so that I could use them in my backyard wrestling federation. Oh my god. It it it. it it's cool because you were so disciplined to not see all the time. We'll get into it. <laughs> so I, I am, of course, being facetious before everyone jumps on me. Um, yeah, leave a comment. Jo <laughs> join in the uh, the conversation. Restalk.com forward slash support. We'll read out all of them above the five US dollar amount. Um, and we have got a bunch of Ultra Chats on this because mm. this was an a brilliant episode of Raw. Not just for the, the Rock and Cody stuff, which was great. Yeah. Like, a, a superb closing angle. Like it's a proper attitude era is back closing angle. Mm -hmm. I've, I've kind of got my thoughts about like the why people think attitude era is back, and I think it's got nothing to do with the blood and the swearing. Because mm -hmm. really, swearing was not part of the attitude era. Blood was, but but swearing was not. Mm. So I've got my thoughts on why I think this is an attitude era back lol, um, and it's got nothing to do with the blood or the swearing. But you also had the CM Punk promo segments mm -hmm. who finally made seth versus drew an interesting match yeah uh, you had an excellent promo with becky and Rhea, mm. a, uh, a great match with, with ricochet in there as well yep, yep, and like yep. everything else that was throughout the show was just done to design to get you hyped for wrestlemania and like it, it is a uh, it was a, with the exception of the andrade match i suppose was the only outlier in yeah that, as we are sort of two weeks out from wrestlemania it's well, a I mean, week we, we have a a Raw left. Yeah. We have a SmackDown, two SmackDowns and a Raw. And one of the great things about that is that, yeah, so they advertised ahead of time, CM Punk's on this show, mm -hmm. and The Rock is on Raw in two weeks. So Rock is on next week's show. Yeah. Even on uh, the SmackDown review, me and Sat were talking about this. Sat got the dates confused, and I was like, oh, no, no, ju it's just CM Punk that's on Raw this week. I got the dates confused when his music hit. Yeah, and The Rock is on next week's show. So The Rock making an unannounced appearance on this show was... Uh, Chicago went nuts yeah. for this. Because, I mean, this was the crowd for it as well. No one knew, and they had a shot this brilliant. So what happened was, Cody opened the show. And he came out, he puts over Pat, and he puts over Cole. Talking about uh, Roman's interview with uh, uh, Pat McAfee. Um, and he was in full-on like Rock cosplay. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah, he's the worst bully in the world. Uh, and he talked about how he's going to be the best man at someone's wedding. He's going to a fifth birthday party. He's doing all of these things because that is who I am. I'm a genuine human being. I'm not doing this for clout. I'm not doing this as a character. This is who I am. And I'm doing this because I need all of you. And I'm going to apologize to The Rock and Roman Reigns for ruining their WrestleMania wank fest. <laughs> he said the word we say. <laughs> <laughs> Which I thought, was, yeah, it was great. You know, pop me. Uh, yeah. PG, lol. And um, so he was like, I, if I'm going to do this, though, I need your support. Mm. I do this for you. So I'm going to need you with me. I've not really done the WrestleMania points. And the reason why is because I need you to do it with me. So I'm going to ask all of you to point to the WrestleMania sign with me. And he points and everyone points with him. And it's lovely and it's joyous. And then The Rock's music hit. Woof. And it really was genuinely like a 
whoa okay the rock is here my notes are in all caps yeah at that point genuinely i did not expect the rock well no one did they didn't advertise it ahead of time i uh and i've said my piece about this on the the smackdown podcast i thought that the roman cody face-off was pretty pedestrian like it was yeah neither of them said anything new to the conversation i was underwhelmed by it which was you know given that i was super hype for it i was um and i and i liked the avengers assemble moment i liked the 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 line at the beginning saying you know if you if you're you're a man of your word i'm a man of mine kind of thing knowing full well that roman was never going to be a man of his word he's a smart baby face yeah and i and i and i liked i liked the visuals of that but the segment itself i thought under delivered a little bit so mm-hmm. it was nice and, and i was already in the the mode of this is a good promo i really liked the crowd work that cody was getting there was a lot you know getting the rocky sucks chants already and then getting specifically a roman sucks chant from the crowd chicago are an intense crowd anyway i was a little bit afraid that i was hearing some booze for cody and i was like oh are we already turning on him is that what the decision has been and actually it really felt like he was able to get them on side and be a part of it. Getting a Roman sucks chant when Roman has felt like a tertiary part of this story was a really good sign for me that I'm like, oh, okay, well, we, we're bought into all of this yeah. kind of thing. So then when the Rock's music hits, I'm leaning forward. I'm like, well, hang on, what's happening now? I have been the guy that's been on the defensive of uh, Roman feels like the third wheel. Mm. Because I've been the guy that defended me, like, no, 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 it's by design. Like, yeah. so the Rock is purposefully overshadowing Roman Reigns. That is the point. He's supposed to be overshadowing him because he's going to build to Roman versus Rock down the line. But I, you know, from the same on SmackDown, I was like, yeah, no, Rock does. Roman does feel like the third wheel uh, mm. a little bit in this. I'm actually, I want to see Roman. I want to see Cody versus Rock at this point mm. more than I, I want to see uh, Roman versus Cody. Um, and this kind of episode kind of uh, solidified that a little bit. But the Rock comes out and they have this awesome shot, much pared down. Uh, screen like a big stage for this because they can sell more tickets that way so it's just kind of these a very small led board which i thought i think looks so much better it's it's, mm. so much, it's less garish intimate in a way yeah i've always liked when raw feels like we're all involved but they have this shot so it's facing the oh, ramp Jesus. so you've got cody in the ring and you've got the rocks titantron that is just all this lightning and stuff and the way that the lightning is on the screen and the rock walking out in the distance, it legit looks like that moment when Thanos walks out in Infinity War yeah. when he arrives in Wakanda. It does look like that. That is the moment that it, that it looked like. And it was so cool yeah. and awesome. And he walks down, the crowd are chanting, holy S. He doesn't say a word. He just whispers something in Cody's ear. Lovely little call back to how this all started. And then he leaves. And the crowd boo the rock because he didn't do a promo. Boo, boo, boo. And away he walks. And he walks backstage and Jackie wants to have an interview with the rocks. Like, what did you say to Cody? And he's like, rock's not going to tell you what I said. If you want to know what I said, you can ask Cody yourself. A little bit of hook and tease there. And gave me the indication that this was going to be an all night thing. And one of the things I love is all night. Do you know what Rock, is, Rock, Rock said to Cody? I did lip reading. Yeah. Is, is, what's it going to? I'm going to make you bleed some. He literally just leant forward and said, hey. I'm going to make you bleed. Yeah. And then left. That's it. Yeah. Which, which would, would make me go, oh, hang on. That feels un- uncomfortable. Yeah. And then later on, Jackie interviewed Cody and Cody said, well, I'm not going to repeat what uh, Rock said. Um, I'm quite happy to say Wankfest on TV, but I, <laughs> I will not repeat the words that The Rock said. But he has made a promise that he cannot keep. Boy, was Cody wrong. Mm. Because uh, the main event of the show was Jey Uso versus Shinsuke Nakamura. Not much of a match. Like, yeah. I, I, you know, the, the comparisons to the Attitude Era, I said this in my edited review, but the in the Attitude Era, particularly on TV, wrestling takes a back seat. Mm-hmm. And this is a main event that felt like wrestling was taking a back seat to the angles. Yeah, it's the, it's the I mean, as I, I've said before, for me, wrestling is, or it's all part of wrestling. Wrestling is storytelling as well as the physical, what goes on between the belts. I need, I need both of those things. But in terms of television narrative, when it gets to a big show... The wrestling is the main focus. It's, it all roads have led to here. Of On weekly episodic television, the, there needs to be a balance of both, and especially in the lead up to WrestleMania, when you're trying to, I suppose, keep your stars from getting injured too soon, um, the storylines take the the step forward, uh, the, I, the front yeah. seat. Yeah. I, I, I took a, a, a few shots last week because I said I wanted wrestling on my wrestling show, mm. which I, I stand by. My point on that was that I like a balance because mm-hmm. last week was very promo heavy and the wrestling just took a, a far of a back seat. This week you got a great match with Ricochet. So that's yeah. kind of like, that's your wrestling fill. I thought SmackDown did a really good job of balancing mm-hmm. it because like, okay, we're going to have a 20 minute uh, Roman Cody segment at the end. So let's just stack the first hour 20 with wrestling. Well, that's also all about 
plotting your time when, yeah. you've, when you've got a television show and you've got your you need to figure out how to get about i think balance is key balance is crucial i i sometimes find myself yeah i'm really enjoying all of this wrestling but i'm lacking a bit of storyline i'm lacking, you know it, it's a, hmm. it's a little bit of both um and and you kind of have to have a broad church at a certain point yeah i'd also argue as well that a good wrestling match has a story in there and yeah, that, and that, yeah. That, that that is part and parcel of but of that's a, of a wrestling you know event. you know that's not what i'm saying yeah i know I'm not, so, i wasn't yeah. saying that's what you were saying it was yeah. the argument that it was like wrestling doesn't draw but anyway so the wrestling here was it was totally fine and jay uso got the win jimmy and solo had come out during the match seth and cody ran down and brawled with them drew mcintyre ran down and brawled with seth and Cody brawls to the back with Jimmy and Solo. So when Jay won, I was, I looked at the guy, I was like, oh, there's still 10 minutes of this show left, so we're going to get a big angle here. And Cody is brawling with them, and he gets attacked by The Rock from behind. Just grace The Rock getting physical. Like, and instantly, like, number one, Rock's getting physical. That's awesome. Because previously, as you mentioned last week, this has only been two slaps. Mm-hmm. That is all the physicality that this feud has had is just two slaps, which I love restraint is so rock is there beating the tire out of him and he's beating him up around like and he takes him outside and it's pouring rain beating him up in the rain leaving him in puddles and stuff and he's beating him and he's cutting this promo the whole time calling him boy and talking like kind he's of a trash yeah. like full rock yeah. cutting a promo on his mum mm. and being like mama Rhodes, this is your boy right here this is your boy look what i'm doing to your boy and he busts him open and Cody comes up and he's got blood pouring down his face. And he looks like the big wounded hero. At one point, I thought he was going to throw him off like that. I did too. I thought they were going to do a big like crash map below and they were going to do the big like throwing off the edge of something. Yeah. Like, you know, like Money in the Bank 2020. Mm-hmm. You know, throw him off the edge. There was a smaller ledge underneath. But they didn't. He just beat him up. He kept throwing him into his American Nightmare bus mm. over and over again. And he then says, I made a promise to Mama Rhodes and this is what's going to happen. Takes off his weight belt it's got Mama Rhodes written on it. I said I was going to have your son's blood on this weight belt, and I was going to have your tears. And so he grabs his hand, and he wipes his hand over Cody's face and smears the blood on his weight belt and says, this is what happens when you F with the final boss. Mm-hmm. Obviously, he did the full-on swear, centering up and down this show, because obviously Cody's doing swearing, Punk's doing A seven-second delay really helps. Yeah, and yeah. then The Rock's doing swearing. And... His final line was, it didn't have to be this way. Now it's the only way. I thought this was a great angle to end off this show. And that really did sort of feel like a response to how pedestrian SmackDown was. Because mm. this like kicked us into a whole nother gear. Yeah, I mean, this is the, the crucial... Uh, next week is the go-home episode of raw before wrestlemania we are in the final stretch here like this is where they need to we've i've sort of mentioned a lot there's time for things to heat up and i thought elsewhere on the show other things were heating up developments really started to to lean uh, tammy and chad is what i'm thinking of um that really start, like interested me we're in the final stretch this is where they need to take full advantage and make these moments hit to so that we're frothing at the mouth to buy this show and this was something that i think achieved that spectacularly and it really was all about the uh, aura i suppose of it the the atmosphere the the rain which was making cody's sharp suit just drenched he was absolutely drenched and yet weirdly it looked like the rock was impervious to the rain it didn't look like he didn't even get a drop on him which gave its own sort of little enigma to it Uh, the yeah the feeling like he's maybe going to scrape his head across the um i had unfortunately seen Cody bloody so right. I knew this was coming but I didn't know how or where it was going to go down would I have loved for Cody's head to go through a window on the bus <sighs> yes I absolutely would have I think that would have taken it over the the hurdle for With me real glass hey I mean punk was there so Crimea maybe, river maybe um, but yeah I, I did something like that just to make make it that extra little bit vicious um but uh, but even so the sight of blood on raw going through the blonde which was always the rick flair thing you know i think it's such a uh, a striking visual uh, the the rock trash talking throwing and launching trash cans at him mm-hmm. just just as you said the rock getting physical it really was this exercise in restraint because if you don't show me blood every single week if you don't show me blood every single month like it's it's rare to see blood on raw specifically yeah, that one never happens in this ju- it's, 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 yeah it, on wwe program yeah then. it's rare and as a result it hits harder that shot of cody's 
head in Rock's hands hit that little bit harder, him smearing the blood, maybe uncomfortable mm. because it's not something that's used all the time. The the conversation about the rock and swearing has been absolutely fascinating to me because the idea that like I, I said this on one of our Patreon calls yesterday, but the I'm gonna I'm gonna do a swear mod mother I'm warning you now, but the idea that the word fuck is what's gonna get Carrion crossover, no no. Because if you if you if you're a a, a, a a level drama student who's learned that you can suddenly swear all the time and you put it in every single one of your drama pieces the temptation is there because it makes you seem edgy and adult and whatever but we don't hear it all the time we don't hear curse words we don't hear that level of aggressive language so that when we do hear it the rock's foul mouth is that much more effective it's all that we hadn't seen anything other than a slap you know a slap from each of them they they're they're one a piece so when the rock comes out of nowhere and i heard his rock punch noise mm -hmm. i was like oh my god we're here in the like I'm, I'm watching already a dynamic brawl backstage between cody and solo and there's a match i want to see again but suddenly the rock's here and the rock is part of this beat down oh my god like and you know we've seen the rock do a rock bottom on on jinder but we haven't seen hollywood rock get physical in 21 years this was when you when you are cautious, when you when you hold back a little bit, and then you finally give it, this is what happens. So that's where you have with seven weeks of build. Yeah, you can't do it. You can't do all of it. And this is what we were talking about last week. And um, I, I'd said that on paper you could make the argument that the build to WrestleMania has been lame because it's just been. Cody cuts a promo on Raw, on SmackDown, the Rock cuts a promo. Cody cuts a promo on Raw, on SmackDown, Rock cuts a promo. On, and it's just like, it is like, in my GM terms, you are just doing call-out promos. Mm -hmm. Like, that, that is all it is. But because they've always found new wrinkles to those promos to be like, this one services this one, and then this one services this one. It builds and it builds and it builds and it builds, and it gives you a moment like this. Now, next week, Roman and The Rock are advertised for the for Raw. Mm. So they're both going to be on the go-home edition of And that's of Cody's Raw. show. That's Cody's show. It's yeah. so like next week now, it's like, man, if you saw this week, if this is just what Rock's going to do, mm -hmm. you've got to watch next week because Roman and The Rock are going to be on the same show. And how is Cody going to fight back? Because Cody's someone who's, whose whole character is about respectability and about being uh, honorable and, mm. and noble. And if you're Ned Stark, you know where that gets you. So... The idea, I, I know there are some people online who are sort of like, well, why didn't he fight back or whatever? But it was, it needed to be taken at. A... If he just fights back, then what does that achieve? Yeah. Like, you need to do the beat down. You need to have the down before you can have the up. Exactly. And the guy's bleeding. Like, yeah. let's just, like that's why, that's why that a window shot would have been the one thing that would have made those people online shut up. But those people online weren't going to shut up anyway. Just like, so it's, it those, was... those people are never going to be pleased. Yeah. Like, we are in like a, a period of time where everything is firing on all cylinders mm -hmm. in both WWE and AEW. But there are people with AEW avatars that are just saying that WWE is bad, and people with WWE avatars that are saying AEW is bad. Like you're net. Like those people are never going to be satisfied. Aren't you glad the Monday Night War didn't have Twitter? Like it, they would have been insufferable. Well, wait, wait, well, I mean, it's been the same as it is now. Yeah. Well, I suppose. Um, but yeah, I I just loved everything about this whole segment and and the fact that it fed throughout the show. Uh, even when um, Seth comes up and is like, yeah, I, you, to your point of the, the main event was just kind of a match that didn't need to happen. I agree that it was just a match that was was there, but it was like it was like a prologue. It was like a trap. Seth coming up to Jay just before he goes out of space. I've got a weird feeling about tonight kind mm -hmm. of thing. We'd already seen Jay and Solo were there. Jimmy and Solo. That one. Um, they look the same. <laughs> so, um, except for Jay's the one with the mullet. That's how I need to, yeah. And, uh, and Jimmy's the one who smiles. Hits. Well, Jimmy says no as well. Jimmy says no yeet. Yeah. He absolutely does do that. Um, but yeah, they they um, the, the the teasing, the feeding of that all being there was. Um, I, I think it was like it was like laying a trap, and that whole idea that Cody's a fool, like the Roman was saying on SmackDown, Cody, you're a fool. Like you fall into these things all the time. But he hadn't that time, except he didn't expect the Rock to show up this week, and he didn't expect uh, none of us expected the Rock to do that. Mm -hmm. That, I think, is a really excellent through line of this whole episode. So here is where my comparisons to the Attitude Era come in. Ooh. And as I said earlier, I don't think it's got anything to do with the blood. I don't think it's got anything to do with the swearing. Mm. What people remember the Attitude Era for is stars. Mm -hmm. And this segment was the biggest stars. Mm. It was the biggest heel in the company taking on the biggest baby face and leaving the biggest baby face in the pool of his own blood. It was star on star. And then you look up and down the show, and I was, I, that's what I kept feeling when I was watching this show. 
I was like, CM Punk comes out, he's a star. Drew McIntyre comes out, he's a star. Seth Rollins comes out, he's a star. And all three of them then have a magic segment because mm-hmm. it's stars. Becky Lynch and Rhea Ripley yeah. have their promo segment. Becky is a star. Rhea is a star. Dom is a star in his own right. So the mm. three of them work their magic together and make you feel important. And then you've got Gunther comes out and he feels like a star. And you've got star presence on the show. So when you have that main event segment that's got, yeah, Jay and Shinsuke Nakamura don't exactly feel like top level dudes, but you've got stars brawling around mm. them. Seth is a star. Drew's a star. And you've got like, and then The Rock and Cody. And it's star power. Mm. That's what the Attitude Era had. Attitude Era and had everyone being involved in everyone else's things, yeah. like the thread. The Attitude Era, like it, the, the wrestling was not the best, mm. like, but it, it's that was fine because wrestling took a backseat to star power, and the star power carried a lot of those wrestling matches into being some of the best you're ever going to see. Yeah. And the TV shows, wrestling didn't matter up and down the card. It was two minute matches with DQ finishes, yada yada yada. But the star power was there in the main event scene, in the mid card scene. Everyone felt like they were over. And WWE at the moment, everyone feels over. Mm. And that's why I feel that this is the Attitude Era back. Mm-hmm. It's That's the vibe. And we haven't had... And it's why Attitude Era stands head and shoulders above ruthless aggression and PG and reality eras. Because no one really felt like they were stars. There were a couple of people. John Cena was a star. Yeah. But evan born and i got you could run up and down the card like yeah. in, in 2014 everyone is just down here and then the scene are up here mm. everyone now just feels hugely over mm. and that's why it feels like the attitude era to me and that's why this felt like an attitude era closing to a show because it just had the star power mm. i think it's very well put i oh, completely agree yeah it's 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 all about um making your audience want to see making them want to know what's going to happen next the idea that as I say, the through line narrative for so long, I felt like Raw in particular, but all WWE television really mm. has been. I'm here now. I've had my segment. I'm not on television again. I'm yeah. here and I have my mind. And like, everyone, everyone has the little zip lock back. It's like meal prep for a television mm. show. Everyone has their separate like buckets that they get to sit in, and then they get pulled out to be played with. Here, the idea that all of these things are coming into one, that the bloodline is this threat that covers the whole thing, the idea that The Rock is someone who sits on the board of directors, the idea that um, Seth is also a world champion but cares just as much about that other belt meaning something because that makes his belt mean something kind of thing. The You know, his internal logic, whether or not you agree with it, like one one agrees with it, to be clear. Um, But uh, it it all mattering, it all matters, and it, it matters to the people who are at the top who I'm supposed to buy into. Yeah, the other argument that, you know, we kind of touched upon this earlier of um, this just feels like I want to see uh, Rock versus Cody. Mm-hmm. Well, we're seeing that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's happening at WrestleMania. It's not like that match is not happening. No. We are seeing Rock versus Cody at WrestleMania. Mm-hmm. This is all there to build that tag match. And that tag match is then used to build Roman versus Cody. Granted, I agree wholeheartedly that I think that they need to do more to heat up Roman versus Cody. Mm. Because at the moment, that does not feel like the most important match at WrestleMania when it should do. What it, Cody winning the belt feels like the most important thing at WrestleMania. The match does not. If you see yeah, what, if you no, say, I completely see what you mean. I think a part of that is the fact that Roman's not been on television as much as The Rock. The, Rock, you the, know, the Rock's been there. Yeah, the Rock's been like almost every single show. Yeah, and, and it's like he wasn't on SmackDown this week. But he was on Raw. He was on Raw. So like that was a plot twist. Like yeah. I, I, the the you need you do and this is the point of being present. You do need to be present to make me care about you. You do need and and Roman has a a, a unique skill. When he did that um that forty minute segment where he was throwing a strop and then The Rock came out and had a big mm. promo. It's he was doing some incredible work. Like he maybe phoned it in a little bit. I felt during the Crown Jewel build or during mm. the even the Rumble build. Here he absolutely uh, didn't in in that, those segments. But when you're not there all the time, it it does become a story about Cody and the guy who is there all the time, the one who's making the most compelling arguments. So, you know, I hope that they use these next three episodes of television to really emphasize what that is, and then almost the entire of Sunday, online on the show to make that match feel special and and it's why i've seen a lot of people be like oh they're already fantasy booking ways that cody loses and all this stuff so where's the drama whatever i'm desperate for cody rose to win that belt and part of the reason i'm desperate for cody rose to win that belt is because i want something new for the roman reigns character i think roman reigns as this character has done 
everything the, the belt is no longer serving the character and the character is no longer serving the belt we need to see what happens with all of these people in a new evolution that's why i think people are so excited i agree with you because i feel like at this point the belt is just a number yeah yes it, it is just a number of how many days he has had it as opposed to being like this is making your character and i always go back to the if you mick foley's promo he did years and years ago to cm punk you want a number 29 that's the cumulative number of days i held the belt i'm a legend do you want to be a number do you want to be a legend and yeah. i think getting past the number and into i mean and we'll talk about it when we get to gunther as well but but winning and losing and titles that we need to believe that there's peril and i now believe there's peril for roman reigns and i'm excited about it one last thing to say on the segment is uh and i believe this had been pointed out a lot online is the production trucks that were there <laughs> had Austin <laughs> had Austin and Cena on there. Now, people were like, "Is it by design?" And I've we've been saying for a while, everything that the Rock is doing is so scripted. Like, so the L that he does yeah, yeah, yeah. is by design. Like, he is doing this for a reason because it is there to set up something that will happen down the line. But I thought it's just a production truck. It is a coincidence. Trolling. However. <laughs> WrestleVotes tweeted, everything is done on purpose. Yes, I've seen this. Two weeks out from WrestleMania, the backdrop to these WrestleMania-specific trucks last night would have sufficed. I'll leave it at that. And it is a picture of the production trucks with the WrestleMania brand. Exactly. So at the moment, they are going to town to town with the WrestleMania production trucks. So they've got Flair and Drew and Seth and Jimmy and Logan Paul. And they've got all the current stars. The truck that they had at last night's show specifically was chosen <laughs> to have austin and cena on it now if i may please do and I, that ties into the wrestling observer report from friday which is austin and cena are in discussions to be involved at wrestlemania along with undertaker now i was there in november when uh people were doing gts's on screen and someone was saying best in the world and and people kept dropping is that a cm punk reference is that a cm punk reference i was there in november and none of it was a cm punk reference i was also there so in november Mora was calling him out i was also <laughs> there in november when cm punk came back so hey look that could just be the funniest coincidence that could be them trolling the ever-living life out of us mm -hmm. Or it could be an Easter egg hinting at what may be a, a piece of, honestly, in my head, glorious uh, uh, chaos booking yep. for the fine for the finality. WrestleMania 14 energy. That this has WrestleMania 14 energy. Do you know, like the idea of a crowning a, a, new, a bad show, maybe crowning a new <laughs> crowning a new person. Yeah, you yeah. know, that's what I, I know. Mean. That mean, that yeah. that image that you have of Austin with the with the belt in the air. Look. I mean, Do you it, know, it might not happen. It might happen. Either way, that tickled me very much. I, I would have just put it down to coincidence had it not been for Russell Votes. Well, who are a very reliable source. Well, but all, but but also like nothing. You're right. Nothing is by coincidence. Like if they if they see that and go, oh, we don't really want to put that over. Do you want to move that specific truck? They've got the keys. It's their it's their company. Yeah. Like they but planned the like segment. They, but also they might have thought like, well, no one's gonna pick up on this as being a yeah. thing but you know the internet is the way the internet is so obviously uh, not obviously but perhaps done by design mm. very interesting i was saying to you yesterday we were doing our patreon calls for our uh, 100 dollars backers and i am like fully on board for this overbook the schmoz yeah. out of this main event i've come Have around music hit music hit music hit music hit pop upon pop upon pop upon pop i have been more reticent because i i want people to buy into the purity of the moment i want it to be you know you're on your own now roman uh there's no bloodline around you one-on-one -on -one, i'm the better man I, that's that's kind of, and then cody's victory is not tainted in any way by shenanigans and then the more i've thought about it and the more i've pictured these moments and the more i can hear that i remember mankind to bring mcfoley up again winning that belt yeah, it was a the, january 4th it was it it put a lot of butts in seats because it was someone people really liked it was a real moment for them the glass smashing it was all the stars. DX were around the ring. The rocks there, the corporation. Oh, do you know what? Sod it. It's like, you know, there's like 20 people like in that moment. Look, as long as nobody... I mean, maybe someone can hit Roman. I don't know. It's wrestling. It's well, WWE. It's like, he's like, you do a double down and then yeah. you just do pop, 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 pop. Oh my music God. Music hits, music hits, music hits. Everyone comes down. Everyone does their spots. Everyone brawls away and you're just left with Cody and Roman. I mean, it could just be... It, it could... It has the potential to be something 
magic that will live on for literally the rest of our lives. Yeah. It also has the potential to be so underwhelming. So I can't, I don't want to, I'm tempering it, my own expectations when I say that. Yeah. Uh, well, let's get into your alt chats on this subject. We have got a bunch of these because people are very, very excited about what this episode. Big show? Well, and this angle in particular. Restalk.com forward slash support. Ben here said, as great as it was, it truly was. Who the hell is main eventing night two? Cody versus, oh, what was his name? Luther Reigns or something? <laughs> Hey, Rock, should we build Roman versus Cody? Nah, not going to work for me, brother. As a result, I could not give a two craps about him. Main event, main event night one, Cody versus Rock. Uh, oh, uh, mid-card champion and Rock's cousin? I guess they'll be there too. They have two weeks left to make me care about Reigns because the, after the meh segment on SmackDown, Rock versus Cody is boiling hot while Cody versus Roman is ice cold. I don't think ice cold because Cody is part of it. I think Cody's bringing some of the heat. Now, if in this uh, in this sink, perhaps Roman is the cold water. I don't know. But um, the fact, yeah, as I said, the fact that at the beginning of the show, there was a big Roman sucks chant shows that there is going to be a vocal presence of the crowd the to way? be part engaging with Roman. Um, but I do think they do need to do some heavy lifting and, and he needs to pull his own weight. But hey, we've got Raw next week. And I don't know if he's also on SmackDown, mm. but, you know. We've got Raw next week. Yeah. They're both there. Cody will be there. Seth will be there. Drew will be there. They'll be on SmackDown as well, on that final SmackDown. Yeah. They'll be there. Uh, Ryan Marshall said, I was at Raw for my first live show since a Nitro in 1998 wow. as a 14-year-old. The crowd was electric all night. We had a two-hour drive back through a storm, so we left with 10 minutes left because the place was packed to the rafters and it was a tough exit. So I finally get home to midnight, close to midnight, local time, and open up the socials. First thing to pop up is The Rock hammering on Cody and driving the sensors wild. My brother-in-law said as we were leaving hey at least we won't miss a rock segment so long story short probably should have been fine getting home around 1 30 p 1 30 a.m we literally heard them fighting since it was right by where we were parked oh my god i just thought someone dropped something just an all-time screw up by me that's crushing Look, as a man united fan you never leave before the final whistle something will always happen Kevin, one of the best episodes of Raw I've ever seen. Rock versus Cody. Uh, Rock and Cody. Drew, Seth, Punk, Becky, Rhea got me hyped for Mania. And also next week's episode of Raw. I hope WWE can maintain this level of hype after WrestleMania. Next week, we need Black Hoodie Cody to go rogue. Interesting. Eddie J. Night 1 will be Avengers Infinity War with the giant bald villain prevailing. And Night 2 will be Endgame with the heroes finally triumphing. Um... Triumphing. 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 Uh, they gave they gave us a spoiler for who's coming through the portals on the trailers during Cody's beatdown. Mm, on your left. Will Campbell, who we were speaking to uh, yesterday on uh, Patreon, um, said, Hi guys, first off, thanks for the nice chat yesterday. Secondly, holy hell, what a closing angle. It's one of those things that makes you feel viscerally uncomfortable, but in a good way, because it's so spellbinding at the same time, you can't help but watch. I think Will was actually the person we were talking specifically yes, about the January 4th nonsense. Mankind's yeah. winning. And that's where I was like... Everyone runs down. Everyone runs yeah. down. I think also to the point of it being viscerally uncomfortable, it, it these things need to be. And and, and if they happen, that's what I mean. If they happen all the time, it doesn't get that natural response from you where you're like, oh my God, I can't. Like, you know, that's not, to be abundantly clear, that's not me advocating for 42 weeks of boring television just for the lead up to WrestleMania being amazing. Um, but, you know, when, when, you, when you exercise discipline and restraint, stuff like this can happen. Yeah. I, I mean, look, if I can be a little bit glib, uh, put on my little like Captain Cynical hat for Not a second, you, then is like you. I go back to those 2019 interviews where Triple H was like, oh, "We don't need that blood and guts. We don't need blood. We don't need swearing on our shows to be amazing." And yeah. now, like they're putting on the best shows that they have done, and it's filled with swearing and, yeah, and look, now blood. And I just I disagreed with him then at the time. I don't think you need blood and I don't think anyone needs guts. I don't think you need. Well, AEW doesn't have guts either. Hey, they have a match literally called Blood. I'm joking. <laughs> um, you don't you don't need blood and guts every single week, but you. It's it's a good tool to use to sell a moment because I th I think blood improves wrestling. I think I, I was, think it I was playing definitely. Through, uh, sorry, I was playing through showcase mode and I was doing Rock versus Austin WrestleMania X Seven and mm. both of them with blood pouring down their face and I'm like this is the best thing ever. No, and I and I watched that match recently and I agree and I think the reason that I feel it is because it was the main event. If you're bleeding every single, I go back to the the same thing when you go to an indie show and you see a Canadian destroy every match or you see the the arm fest my first time i'm seeing that i'm like this is great the second time i see mm -hmm. it i'm like oh okay and if i see every single match by the time we get to the main event the blood has lost all meaning it's agenting when you, you yeah it is when you use it when you use discipline you should be using these tools properly mm -hmm. you shouldn't never use blood you no. should use it wisely and that's what we saw last night i think what's incredible about the blood is 
the reason why they haven't done blood on TV for so long is Mattel. Mm. Like, because it's a family product. Mm. And so they want a, a squeaky clean image. I remember when Joe and Bala had their match in NXT and I think Joe gets busted open just above his eye. It was by accident, you know, he just got cut open hard way and the match just has to stop while they're sorting out and joe is pissed off Mm -hmm. because he just wants to wrestle and just carry on the match and they have to keep stopping it to put more goals and the crowd are booing it Mm. and the crowd are there going and the crowd started chanting fpg remember dave Meltzer being like it's not pg that's stopping them no it's mattel that's stopping them and like them being tv pg is it's not a it's not law it is guidance for your yeah. viewers. You can do whatever They're you on want. At 11 p.m. You can do whatever you want as a TV PG thing. Mm. You just then have to deal with the repercussions that you have told your audience this is a TV PG mm-hmm. and you've done something that's TV MA. Mm-hmm. Also, like, it's it's it, it is just a case of uh, corporate people, you know, wringing their hands and not necessarily getting what the people that they like. Go and read McFoley's Foley is good. Like, go and read that entire chapter about the PTC and and the hypocrisy of it all. Like, what you see on a random episode of like the NFL, even or what you see. It's a sport. It's a contact sport. It's contact sport. It's why why, uh, right censor one of the greatest factions in (laughs) the history. Not sure. Force said, "Hi, lad. The brutal beat down at the end of Raw is something I wasn't expecting at all. Do you think we see a a retaliation strike on SmackDown, perhaps? Also, I'm loving the Monday Night War. Rooting for you to take home the gold, Luke. Jam that jam." Thank you very much. No. You don't think there'll be a retaliation on SmackDown? No, I don't think you're going to take on the gold. Oh, I probably won't. Um, Jinder's 30k ball out. Speaking <laughs> of the Monday Night War. Uh, big fan of you guys and all your hard work. The placement of the Cena Austin trailer seems like foreshadowing the coincidence, or maybe I'm trying hard to manifest it into existence. Just saying. Andy Madrid, hello from San Diego. Mini hey. this year is so weird. I want Rock and Roman to win night one almost as much as I want Cody to win night two. Remember when The Rock used to come back and it was blah, 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 rock bottom segments. I'm so happy that's over. I think we were talking about that last week, that The Rock coming really back. Really Yeah, it was just like it would. I mean, we don't even have to look back that far. Nope. It happened on 1st of January. Gen- yeah, literally this year. It literally happened this year. Yeah. We had what happens when The Rock comes back, yeah. which is boring babyface promos yay america yeah. beat up a foreign heel mid card mm. uh geek of arabia jesus effing christ that was attitude i feel like i was missing sure it wasn't 10 times over their head with a chair brutal but it's the vibes that i wanted from heel rock I actually don't want 10 times over the head with a chair brutal even though um you know it was a good time though punk drew and seth going back and forth that was quite fun we will get to that in a little bit edgar carrasco has been in benberg for 27 months in a row said the episode was amazing three hours flew by couldn't unglue my eyes from the final segment i felt like i did back in the attitude era cody must win lobi warsaw the show was great my biggest talking point from this raw was that roman is the weakest link in the feud i'm even more interested in seth's part cody's promo sold the solo match better alone than he did with roman mm. liam leonard who's been a member for 31 months in a row it's his birthday as well uh, it's nice to see when these non-pg segments happen uh, rarely so it doesn't become overused gonna enjoy my birthday today to rewatch this a hundred times moose said this felt a lot like a go home show now i'm wondering um how Triple H is going to follow up with next week's Raw and next week's SmackDown. It just sucks with these big shows. Uh, it just sh- it just sucks when these big shows decide that when you need to find time, they do it by cutting down the women's match. We'll talk about that. Oh yeah. Baxter, in the SmackDown review comments, I said that Cody needed to find a way to get under Roman's skin, so that for the literal for the go home show Raw, Roman attacks Cody. I no longer think it is needed after what Rock did. Literally, bloody hell, awesome closer to the show. I definitely think you want you need to see. I would love them to go off the air brawling on on that final Friday. That's what you want. I, yeah, and, I, and in my head is JR's voice. Obviously, it, it quite legally can't be this time, but literally it was never going to be. But like the idea of them fully having a brawl off the air. I, I also, it's the disheveled nature. Of it. That's why, you know, my I think I said this on After Dark, my favorite match with, one of my favorite matches ever is is Bailey and Sasha. And the reason that the um, TakeOver one uh, in Brooklyn supersedes the the uh, follow-up the iron woman match is because at the end of it she's holding that belt and she's won it and she's disheveled and her hair's all over the place and mm. she's just like you know that's what i imagine when i imagine a wrestler winning a championship yeah it feeling like i have scaled to the top of this mountain and i think I, i'm and seeing cody bloody last night showed me that do you know what i mean yeah. it's like i i got I, I wanted to bleed like mad on that sunday Oh. It's uh, it's my favorite WWE match of all time. Mm-hmm. Uh, Bailey versus Banks. Oh, sorry, the, the hardcore triple threat, of course. Um, just with Big Show and Raven. Yeah, like that's the that's the, my favorite WWE match of all time. But oh, I, I thought you were doing a bit because it was Raven, but you mean that literally? 
yeah. It's a, Great. Yeah, it's my, it's my favorite WWE match of all time. Perfect. And second to that, and probably maybe actually above it, I did say to Bailey that it was, is Bailey Banks at Brooklyn. Justin here said, excited to send my first Ultra Chat. Could Rock's beatdown of Cody create some tension between Roman and The Rock? Roman doesn't like it when blood members deviate from his plan. Seemed on SmackDown, Roman's going for more uh, a more psychological warfare. I definitely think the way you keep this going is to give Roman step to The Rock. You remember when he hit the hand? Mm -hmm. Oh, another one of those, please. Jonathan Cantrez has been a member for six months in a row. Did you guys notice the truck in the background <laughs> with Cena and Austin? A tease of what's to come, maybe. Rock's old rivals coming uh, to help Cody on night two will banter here said can cody respond to rock's attack does drew care more about cm punk than the world title did the tribal chief approve the beatdown in chai town or did the rock make the call find out on the next episode of dragon ball z r.i.p toriyama um yeah i mean i'll get to the drew thing later but that was actually one of my favorite things on this show uh jam beard said been a while since i've also chatted in live i watched a lot of the clips on social media from raw and i did enjoy them but i still find it hard to get back and watch wwe tv i'm enjoying the pay-per-views but i haven't watched tv in about two years prediction for mania is that cody pins rock in the tag match because roman accidentally spears rock rock then costs roman his title to set up the tribal chief match for the next saudi pay-per-view between rock and roman i'm very much on the train of uh bloodline win night one to set up blood i think the, given the stipulation of bloodline rules for night two, yeah. I feel like they have to win. I, I am too, but I like the fact that I can see an argument like that and go, yeah, that sounds all right. Like, that's, mm -hmm. a, that's a nice thing to have. Um, and we have it elsewhere in the show as well when yeah. we get to Sammy and Chad. Uh, Dopey Koala said, what are your thoughts on the possibility of Tamatonga debuting at WrestleMania? If he did, how would you see him getting involved, whether it be to help Roman or Cody? I, no disrespect to Tamatonga. I don't think you you don't do a big WrestleMania debut yeah, for Tamatonga. I agree. Because like, he's not got the name value you would have for Cody Rhodes mm. coming back, or if you de if you debuted Kazuchika Okada. Like, yeah. You you need that name value for it to be a WrestleMania surprise. I, Tamatonga, no disrespect to him, but, but would just have a lot of huh. It would also feel like he would debut, and if he's, if he was on the part of Roman or the part of Cody, that that's a that's a Raw after Mania or a next phase I of agree. the story, the next inning. Yeah. Uh, Kuzu here said it's incredibly sad how insignificant Roman feels in this entire build despite being the champion I have to start wondering what's going on with him and why he's taken such a back seat great episode didn't catch a live but I heard it was amazing I feel like the simple answer is just that he's got a limited number of dates yeah that's it uh, the last Quincy said, wow, The Rock is showing why he's called the most electrifying man in sports and entertainment and the great one because he makes everything exciting and memorable whenever he shows up. Just makes you wish The Rock was on SmackDown last Friday. But I think the fact that he wasn't on SmackDown made this even better. Completely agree. Um, absence can make the heart grow fonder. Mm. I think and it was a surprise. But, but Roman has taken that to the nth degree. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So he's taken all of the absence. Yeah. Um, but I think actually the, the restraint of not having Rock on every show, I think, does help when you have the Rock show up on uh, shows like this. Mm. Um, but yeah, honestly, credit to the Rock. You know, the, the initial reports were that he felt like he needs to come in and save WrestleMania. I, I mean, really, he kind of has. I, I really feel like he has, though. Yeah. I really feel like he Just has not in the way he thought he was going to. And But that, again, credit for the pivot. Uh, Caleb Cannon, I thought this episode was great and set up WrestleMania beautifully. My thoughts on Roman and Cody is that Cody should have cut his opening promo to Roman on Friday. It would have had more bite. I do it because the champion isn't here. Might have helped the feud. Brian Thomas, biggest issue I have with Roman swearing is on his own auditory sensory pr processing issue. Watched the Rock concert the other week and I found it unwatchable because of the edit on Hulu. It, 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 it is frustrating when it's the, it's the live element of it of the the live they have the seven seconds that they just do a, a period of, in in big brother live streams they used to just do bird song um it's it's annoying yeah which is why i'm like if you pre-record it you don't get the same energy but you could always get a little beep in there so for just the word but yeah, yeah I, I know what you're saying. I, I totally get what you mean as well because like you're, you're doing it during like cody's promos you're doing it during rock's promos you're doing it during punk's promo mm. and because the crowd do it you center the crowd as well there's that's so right, much that's like, annoying it is quite it, i think i find it very annoying uh, justin said feels like the tag match will be a lot more of cody versus rock and seth versus roman to save that cody versus roman physicality for the match on night two i'm just hoping we can do tons of overbooking and craziness on both nights super hyped to get to be there oh, live God, I'm jealous. and lastly for now zoob here said i'm pretty sure the rock whispered to cody i've just sold myself walking to the ring i'm gonna cut this short <laughs> and that's why he didn't cut a promo in the ring well uh, we'll have more from your Ultra Chats later on, but we have got uh, more of this episode of Raw to get into, which we're going to do right now. Um, Michael Cole buried Pat for dressing like the bloodline. <laughs> 
And then we got Jackie interviewing The Rock. And then we had the Judgment Day in their Judgment Den, where they were basically there to have a go at JD McDonough to do better. And they're putting it all on him to beat Ricochet this week. And Rhea told Dom off for going to SmackDown to interfere in Ray's match. She specifically said, like, I'd like to have been there. Like, you know, a bit, bit communication. I, th- I, I like this Rhea Dom tenderness that she's doing rather than just being like mm-hmm. we dominate monday night raw <laughs> which we then got with all this australia thanks so much which we then got with damien priest just being like we need to tackle the business at hand i'm like oh god not again. <laughs> like come well, on what else do you want from the judgment day this is what they do uh, it, it, it is what they do they handle business i can't wait for judgment day 3.0 <laughs> we did have ricochet versus jd mcdonough um this match was I mean, it was way better than it needed to be. Yeah. I, and it was kind of there to be an advert for... Here's the thing with Ricochet. Is they tell you a lot. Oh, it's the highlight of the night. <laughs> oh, man, here comes the highlight of the night. Captain Highlight pew, pew. of the Night. Pew, pew. It's highlight of the night, Ricochet. But no one really cares. Because mm. there's never been any follow-up to any highlights of the night they've done with Ricochet. Last year was a bit of a... sitting in the summer of constantly trying to go viral. Yeah. purposefully trying to go viral and it never actually did the one viral moment they did get was the was one that organic. was the organic one but when they were trying to make it go viral it never did so ricochet has just been on this he's just been there yeah and he's not really doing anything but in this last three weeks they've been pushing this idea of like oh no he's he's th- two and oh against the judgment day i mean the b team that everyone beats but mm-hmm. he's two and oh against the judgment day and here they was looking to go three and oh against the judgment day but when you have Ricochet on the show and you give him time to just go out there and be Ricochet, he just goes out there and he does his awesome things. Mm. Like, you know, he does the top rope Poison Rana. He does his springboard po- uh, 450s. He does Canadian Destroyers, which I will always pop for, despite what you say. <laughs> well, I popped for this one. Yeah, oh, well, someone's changed their tune, haven't I mean, they? You were literally on a patron call yesterday saying, I don't want to see a Canadian Destroyer again in my life. And I don't, but Triple H added a zero to my, to my contract. <laughs> uh, no, I, I, I'll tell you why in a minute, but yeah. Uh, and then, you know, the shooting star press to a standing JD McDonough. Like, McDonough's the perfect person to put in there because because he will just bounce around and do his big goofy selling mm. for everything. And, you know, they, the commentary commentary in particular were going nuts for this match. At one point, Pat McAfee said it's a six-star match, which is like, <laughs> pump the brakes a little bit there, Pat. But this was, like, dead good. Yeah, I mean, and, and the, not to that point, the nonsense Pat Telestrator thing worked for me in this match, because it just felt like he was, like, on that pure adrenaline high, being like, this was so cool, look at this. Look. This match was great. Like the the it was really fun. All the ma- all the moves were really good. The Canadian destroyer was cool. It felt different to other Canadian destroyers, and it came out of nowhere. And again, when you use things sparingly, like this is another one of restraint. When you use things like that sparingly, they have more impact than if you're just doing a Canadian destroyer, Canadian destroyer, standing up, no selling, all the rest of it. Um, I think this is a really great example to illustrate the point that we were making at the beginning about like the balance between storytelling and wrestling. I think. The reason Ricochet's not really got over is because they haven't been able to do this as much, right? He hasn't been able to just go out there and have a good match. Yeah. Just go out there and do your thing. They hasn't had a story since Logan Paul. Yeah. And even then, there was not much of a story. So they need to inject that story back into it so that it's not just a random spot fest. I liked the random spot fest. I enjoyed it very much. But it is one of those things where I do dink on on uh, AEW, and I'm an equal opportunity dinker, uh, for having a like Canadian Destroyer fest or having just a match with some big spots that don't that make me go, whoa, but don't make me feel anything. Mm. You know, I don't really feel anything for JD Madonna or Ricochet. So inject a little bit more of that emotion in there. And this kind of match, more of this kind of match on Raw, will probably find that balance between the storyline and the wrestling that we all like. Yeah, I, th- well, I think one of Triple H's great flaws is following up on momentum. Yes, um, agreed. So I, I hope that this is one of those ones where let's get some momentum going and mm. let's build to something with yeah. it. As opposed to what I imagine will happen, which is he'll just won't be on TV for a little while. Yeah. Then we had our 20 minute huge in ring promo segment that was, I mean, you know, you mentioned AEW. This was more AEW than it was a WWE promo segment uh-huh. because this didn't feel like it had a script to it whatsoever. <laughs> mm-hmm. I have seen a lot of people say that this was a train wreck oh of my God, a, it was a segment. Hot mess. Because it was just everyone talking over everyone and everyone feeling like, I've got to get my line in. I've got to get my line in. 
but it felt so much more natural because of that and it was a bit of a hot mess but it was a captivating hot mess and cm punk was the star of it all Mm -hmm. with drew mcintyre being fabulous drew mcintyre was exceptional in this segment because and it's that example of you know he's yet another bit for the scrapbook of drew mcintyre has just gone into a whole other level this year Mm. so punk came out to say that uh he will be at mania He's not medically cleared, but he goes down on his wife, so he will be able to to use his mouth at WrestleMania. Carry on, move on as quickly as possible. You want to, to move I on just, from I this? Specifically, I don't want my dad to stop talking to me about what, going Kalinga. going down on Tuna Sound. Get on, get on with it, get on with it. Go Tuesday. forward, go forward. <laughs> Is he trying to rattle through? How many other Bloodhound Gang references stop can it, I think stop up it. in my head? <laughs> Um, anyway, uh, so yeah, he made a reference to Canalingus uh, in all of this because the Attitude Era is back, everyone. Not the ones, not the theme, not Edge's theme. <laughs> Just to be clear, the other thing. Um, anyway, so he's like, hey, I could do, uh, I could do commentary. I could be a guest referee. He made references to uh, he likes Jim Cornette's podcasts because they both arrive in my head. I don't know. They that. both hate AEW. Um, he teases a match with Roman. He teases a match with Rollins. He kind of takes a shot at the rock bringing back his one of my favorite punk promos mm-hmm. ever of you're gonna find that your arms are too short to box with god right in love the f- right in line. the camera yeah and he you can see him pointing to the camera as well as like come closer come closer come closer because this is my one of my favorite lines i've ever done and he then says i don't live on the internet lol <laughs> <laughs> yeah, big liar sh- sure jan uh, and out comes drew mcintyre and punk's like stop the silly music stop the silly music I don't want to hear this music. This music stupid. It's wrong. It's a banger. I love that music. And he challenges Drew to get into the ring, or are you just a guy wearing a skirt? And Drew is like, oh, watch out, buddy. You might say, get yourself cancelled for a talk like that. You don't want to be a homophobe now. And uh, Pungan was like, hmm, yeah, he's got a point there. Uh, and Drew has this awesome line where he's like, Punk, you don't drink or do drugs, which is funny because you spend an awful lot of time in rehab. Oh, what a line. Great, great line. Does the punk sit down? Tells the cameraman not to film him again, you big perv. And then he, like, punk just kept talking over everything he was saying to get in the ring. And like, and he's like, Drew then was like, I'm not going to get in the ring. I'm not an idiot. You'll just attack me with a weapon. I know you've got one. And then he says, like, what you forget, punk, is that I was the chosen one around here. And he starts talking about this. And then punk talks over him and was like, who gave you that nickname? I dare you. I dare you to say who gave you that nickname. Oh, God. Oh. and drew doesn't yeah which i think was probably a wise move um and he says that punk would be a, a great guest commentator out here because then he can be ringside to see me live out his dream mm. from the best seat that he possibly can um and the referee start chanting for him to be the referee rollins comes out at this point as well and he's like hey you guys don't get to make decisions about a world title match particularly when you're not even involved in it and i don't think you can be the referee because your arms busted so punk again just off off ad living just drops down <laughs> which is like yeah i can do it i've got another hand i've got another hand i can do it although i don't think i'd be impartial but with you two dipshits yeah and that he, line was good and he and he proper giggled to himself because he was like ah, i'm just having fun now. well that was it because there was a moment where it felt like i was like well you're just undermining what seth has said but then when he point out no i could do it but I would suck at that. It's like yeah. that's that's bringing it back to balance. Yeah, I still think it undermines Seth somewhat. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But but punk, the whole thing undermines. But, but yeah, oh, yeah, oh, that's the thing. It's like this segment really undermined this world title match. But apart from one moment, which I'll, I'll get to in a moment, because Punk then said, "Honestly, you need me for this. You need me to have a WrestleMania moment because without me, this match does not mean a, a great deal." So do you know what? I will go and do commentary, and I'm going to do something that neither of you two can do. I'm going to make you feel important. Mm. And I, I'm going to make you feel interesting. And he's like, you know, punk out, drops the microphone. His music starts playing. And this is where I say all the other stuff is great. You know, punk making his reference to, to going down, uh, you know, the Drew's line, some of Seth stuff. All of that was lovely. All the talking over each other stuff was very, very fun. Like punk just having a laugh. That's all very good. But here is where I think the killer moment of this segment is. For weeks, Drew has been having a go at Seth for not focusing on this world title match and being focused on the bloodline. 
you need to be paying attention to me. I'm the threat to your world title. You need to be focused on me. And in this segment, Drew gets so angry at CM Punk ending that he storms into the ring and starts yelling at production to cut his music. He can't have the final word in this segment. I'm going to have the final word in this segment. He takes his eye off of Seth Rollins. Seth super kicks him and lays him out with a stomp. I thought that was a wonderful, excellent bit of storytelling to what is actually the, what this segment was designed to do. I thought it was wonderful for that. All the other, the, the 19 and a half minutes mm. that came before it were joyously entertaining. That for me was the best bit of the segment. Yeah, I mean, we said last week that I'm more interested in their individual programs that aren't with each other than I am with Seth versus Drew. Yeah. And this was a really nice way of bringing those things together and reminding us that it is a, a unified thing. Um, I have to put aside my thing about like, I really, I really hate it when people talk over each other. I really hate it. It's improv and an improv. Everyone wants to get the line in and everyone wants to be the one to have the laugh. And I've got a good joke. I'm going to say it. And it starts to feel like a mess. From a performer perspective, I hate that. That re You need to know when to, to step back. But also, it added something else to the segment as well. So I need to I need to check that part of me and and see recognize this segment for what it was, which was just chaos, beautiful, yeah. messy chaos. Uh, I thought Drew, I really Drew Drew's line about "You're my muse" was so yeah, like the idea that I I get off on the damage that I'm causing you internally. Yeah, that, I, that's what drives me. Loved that loved as you say the the closing part where um mcintyre's story really has been him learning to not have patience and just lean in and just do it and just take advantage of things um and there he did it yeah. like you know I, I, and, it, and, it, and it came back to bite him again will that be is that a precursor to seth retaining is that mcintyre um I'm not going to make that mistake again because I did it. I've, I got distracted by Punk. Punk's going to be out there. Is McIntyre going to be distracted by Punk enough for Seth to be able to take advantage and retain? Is you know that and and what's fascinating is I have thought oh McIntyre's winning for a long time, and now there's a flicker of doubt, which is a, another example throughout this whole show of me not actually knowing how certain of these matches are going to turn out at WrestleMania, yeah. and I think that is wildly to their credit. Yeah, I think that is the success of this segment. Yeah. You know. Was it entertaining? Absolutely. Was it a train wreck? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. But it also served a purpose. I and I get what you mean about the, the talking over people thing. So I, I I think that's what some people didn't like about the the Eddie Punk promo yes. segment, yeah. which is one of my like I love that. Yeah. Thing. You know I can't feature it in the TLC of top ten promos because it was a back and forth yeah. as opposed to a singular promo. But it's it's one of my favorite segments that AEW have ever done. Kingston and Punk are the worst for that. They both like to yeah. But, you, know. but you say it's the worst for it, but I think they're the best for it because that's what I, I mean. They're like the, they're, my... they're the worst at doing that, which to you makes them the best at doing promos. Exactly. Yeah, sense. because it just feels real. Yeah. I, I, I you sort of talk from a performance perspective as a from a viewer's perspective. I hate you say your bit, then yeah. I say my bit, and then you say your bit, then I say my mm. bit. Because Again, I, there's a middle ground. There is Absolutely, there is a middle ground to that. And I don't think that this segment had that, and I don't think the Eddie Punk segment had that mm. either. But I think there can be a middle ground. But I think like Copeland's been quite bad for that in AEW, where he, he has. has he's not quite found the middle ground um, to that. He's yet. got too much freedom. He's got too much freedom. Yeah. Um, but I, I had a great time with this promo segment. It was spicy. It made me nervous. It's the magic again. It's all that magic. And I guess it's another example of that restraint. It's the, we, we don't get segments like this all the time, which make them feel even more intense when we get them. Um, and I, look, I'm, I'm sure I will, I will take some, some heat for this. This feud needed punk. I, no, I, I agree. It, 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 I, I have enjoyed Seth and Drew separately. Yeah. This I'm, brought them together. That's it. Uh, I mean, and the only reason I, I think that this feud needed punk is kind of based on the promo segment we had last week, mm. which was a promo segment that was kind of like the, the Cody Roman one, which is, oh, you've added nothing new to this feud. This has added something new to this feud. Mm -hmm. And you're right. Like, is I've been interested in Drew winning and Seth taking on the bloodline. Now I'm interested in seeing Drew versus Seth with Punk on commentary. Mm -hmm. um, this is the moment where I pivot and put on my woke hat. So I will oh, just uh -oh. I will just dink. Dan's woke rot. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll just dink two tiny things, which is the skirt line. That's past it. We're past that. 
and also no, we're clearly not. I, I know, I know. When we aren't, <laughs> but we should be. It's, it's always my point. It's like the eighth time it's happened it's on the just... WWE show in the last three weeks. I just weeks. find it cringe, lads. I don't know what to tell you. And then he just went. He was like rattling off a list of things about Seth Rollins, and then went, "Your wife." And I'm like, we saw a more effective version of the meta we know about your family life thing in Becky's segment later on. I just don't care. Mm-hmm. Like. Oh, I know Becky Lynch is his wife. It doesn't do anything. It doesn't make me feel like, whoa. Yeah, yeah but she's a woman. <laughs> <laughs> she certainly is that. What are you, you going to do about that then, Well, Seth? I mean, egg on my face. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you're married to a woman. What are you, gay? <laughs> <laughs> it is that. <laughs> That's what annoys me. What are, what are we doing? <laughs> Oh, Jesus. Um, right, I mean, we might get a bit more of Dan's book rant. <laughs> because that segment clearly went long. Because Candice, Lorraine, and Ivy Null, I don't. I think they were always just going to have a, a two-minute match if, they were, if it was that. But there were zero entrances and a rather heatless match. But Candice, Lorraine won. Uh, she... I thought actually this was set out quite nicely. Yeah, she was constantly distracting the referee to get Ivy to get Indy to cheat mm-hmm. and to attack Ivy Nile on the outside, but Indy Hartwell wasn't doing she it. She didn't do it. So in the end, Candice faked a knee injury and then she used that to get advantage. Sort of got her feet on the rope. She was pushing the bottom rope to yeah. give her a bit more leverage. I kind of saw that. And and she won, and then she celebrated like she won a world title while Indy Hartwell was a bit perplexed by the whole thing. Yeah, she was not. She was not, I, yeah. I, This was, rather than what we've seen the past couple of weeks of Indy Hartwell, oblivious idiot, we got Indy Hartwell a little bit cross, actually. And mm-hmm. I was like, that's a nice development for it Indy's is, yeah. character as well. Um, again, this feud is wrong. It's, do, it's being done in the wrong order. It's very peculiar to me. Um, I like it for them. But the selling of it is weird, and the selling of it is hampered massively when you look at your show and you think, what's the one thing really we can cut down? And it's this. Mm-hmm. It, it, if they're going to go out there and they're going to have a grand total of two minutes screen time, I get that there are some. There are always comments whenever we bring this up. By the way, this was the only women's match on the show. When we get, um, when we talk about this and we get... Um, people being like it should be a meritocracy it's about the people who are most over it's about the best the people being the best should be there well i'm afraid the world isn't a meritocracy all right that's not how it works and also if they're not given time to get it over how are we supposed to care so when you look at a scene like this and we have had this uh, repeatedly over the past few weeks the rock goes long sometimes punk and seth were going to go long sometimes when that happens and you then look at your run sheet and you're like okay well where do we cut time their first thought is to go down to this one because they think this one is the least important on the whole show and arguably it is the least important on the home show. My personal take is we didn't need that Andrade match later on. Uh, You disagree with that and we'll talk about that when we get there. I I, I wouldn't say it's a strong disagree. Right, right. But but, I don't even know if I have a strong feeling on it. But if you're going to look at it and say it's the least important, you're going to cut time from it. The reason you think it's least important is because you as the booker have made it less important because you don't treat it with the importance you do with the other things on your show it's all about balance and when we're pushing for a little road to equality you need to you need to counterbalance sometimes you need to sorry andrade i'm sacrificing your match and i'm sacrificing this particular week of your development we're going to push it back one more week because we're trying to do something over here with this division ultimately the book stops with the bookers. Yeah. Right? And development's a strong word there with the Andrade thing. Yes. No, completely. Yeah, yeah. But like, I'm yeah. trying to get in there. Of mindset. course, absolutely. Yeah. But like, this is the argument I was making about Tegan Knox when they were trying mm. to like build Tegan Knox up. And yeah, it was exactly. like, we just, you know, she has 30 second matches and it was like, well, care about her now. It's like, well, we're not going to care about her in, in really short space of time. And then what happened when she had a title match? No one cares. DIY. DIY. Johnny so, Organa. Yeah. It was like, it, it took them much longer to do than it needed to to get them over on the main roster. Because they were just not using their time properly. Yeah, and I think it's the same thing with the candidate. It is a lower mid-card yes, thing, so it, it doesn't is. need 20 minutes of TV time, but I think it needed perhaps more than the two minutes. You're also doing something interesting with this character here. So at some point, it won't be a mid-card thing. So invest the time here, and you'll be thankful for it later mm. on. That's, yeah. We had DIY and New Day what? having an argument backstage about WrestleMania. Awesome Truth walked up to say they're going to be on commentary for their match with Truth thinking that Pat McAfee is JBL. Then we had New Day versus DIY. Also, no entrances for this because things time. Are, time and things have gone wrong. Uh, things have gone long, rather. And then Judgment Day came out and caused the DQ. Um, I was quite enjoying it up until that point. Mm-hmm. But, um, well, and it's going to be fun at WrestleMania. But this is... So this storyline, this WrestleMania tag storyline, has had a whopping 12 people added to it. Mm-hmm. 
but the central core of it is still Judgment Day versus Awesome Truth. Mm -hmm. And I think that is what it eventually will boil down to at WrestleMania. And that is what this segment boiled down to here. DIY and New Day didn't really matter a jot. Really, neither did The Miz. This is actually, it's less Judgment Day versus Awesome Truth. It's Judgment Day versus yeah. R-Truth. Um, but it was R-Truth was the one that sort of almost stood toward the end. He fought off all of uh, the Judgment Day, but Damian Priest was the one that laid him out. I really and, think... I, I, I'm sorry, I'm just going to boil that down again. It's less Judgment Day versus Awesome Truth, and it's actually Damian Priest versus R-Truth. Yes, that's it. I think we need to split these tag belts up post-haste because I think in an ideal world you have a Judgment Day versus Awesome Truth and then a six-pack ladder match for the other belts, like somewhere else. Yep. I think that the, the show... There are two women's belts, two mid-card belts, two world title belts, one set of tag belts, and I think the show is suffering as a result of it. So... Um, Maybe this is the this is the moment where it I happens, but happen. but yeah, I'm, I mean, look, I'm excited to watch the match, but my excitement to see our truth win the tag belts has gone down a little bit. Yeah, I think that they've muddied it by adding so many tag teams. Yeah, it's it's into, changed the game. It has a little bit. It's kind of taken away the focus of what it was supposed to be, which was Judgment Day and in particular Damian Priest. I if you know if I'm gonna give my wild prediction, I think Priest is walking out of WrestleMania as the World Heavyweight Champion. Um, either that or on the the Raw after Mania, the Ram. Um, <laughs> Rad Ram. Yeah, and you are going to do Priest versus Truth for the world title. Mm. Interesting. Yeah, maybe not on a pay per view, but main eventing an episode of Raw. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. I don't see it for Priest for a while. I, I, I don't. <laughs> we, I don't no, we haven't got long left, bud. No, <laughs> no, 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 his no, contract no. expires soon. In in July, Mo money in the bank. I should say. His contract expires in July. That's so there's still three months away. Yeah, but I, I I don't I don't buy anything from him now. Well, no, but that's, that's on the booking, I guess. Exactly. Yeah. So, like, yeah. Kathy, who appear apparently was dressed as Electra, like, that was a hell of an so outfit that she was wearing. It was today. the red, and then she had, yeah, I mean, she looked great. She looked, no, she looked great. It's just the way she showed up was like, oh, Electra's here. Uh, she interviewed Gunther, who is all smiles. And Gunther said, yeah, I, don't, I think Sammy's words are empty. I don't think he can beat me. F further's that, I don't think he'd beat Bronson Reed either. Mm. That but, was nice. Boy, was he right. Uh, Andrade then uh, beat Giovanni Vinci. This was supposed to be uh, versus Ivar, but Ivar could not be medically cleared. Uh, Five Force Light reporting is doesn't need to be anything serious. It's just going to be off, out of action for a couple of weeks. And like, this is the one where I'm like, take this away because this was just a match to take place. Like they they slotted Ivar out and put Van Vinci in, and it made no difference to yeah. what the match was going to be. I think this could wait a week. Look, the only straw man argument that I can provide to here as to why this is on the show is that without this, Andrade just has not been on TV. Yeah. Like that is the uh, the only argument I can provide to have this match happen. Yeah, and it's not a good argument. Yeah. Uh, we then had the Rhea Ripley and Becky Lynch promo segments. Rhea Ripley was, uh, you know, they kind of talked a little bit about the, the viral clip from uh, the weekend. Mm -hmm. You know the one. I do know the one. <laughs> and Rhea says like that Becky should be giving her her full attention when it comes to this world title. So Becky comes out and she has a go at Rhea Ripley for not wrestling on not wrestling anymore. Like you don't wrestle on TV these days. And Rhea's like, well, why do I need to? Like I can post a picture of my ass on the internet and like, the crowd go nuts for it. So I don't need to, to wrestle. And Becky's like, that's not what being a champion is. Being a champion is being in this ring. It is busting your ass. It is doing things for these people in attendance and becky I, and i liked her line is like you're not experienced enough to be a falling star in terms mm. of like this becky lynch is like you've been to the top and then you've fallen down now you're trying to climb back up and becky's point point is like you haven't even had the first fall so you do not know what it's like which means you don't know what it's like to be me getting back to the top mm. and ria's like well do you know what you are you're a cockroach you know you're hard to kill but it's not impossible and once WrestleMania is done, I'm going to injure you so badly that your little girl is going to call me Mammy. It's cheap heat. Like it's it's cheap yeah. heat stuff. We've done this with Becky's. I feel like since Becky's had the kid, mm. every promo that someone's had against her is like, I've heard you've got a kid, mm. and here's what's going to happen to that kid. But I thought Becky's response to this was fabulous because it wasn't, "How dare you do you take my daughter's name out of your mouth?" Da -da -da -da. She was like, "That's your one." Yeah. Everyone gets one because everyone does it. But if you do it again, we're going to have serious words. 
And she gets a very impassioned uh, promo about her father not being around to see her be uh, a mother. And she's got like tears in her eyes. Like yeah, her voice is very croaking up here. And she's like, you know, all of this may be a joke to you. That was a funny joke. And it may be a joke to you. And she taps the time and is like, this is not a joke to me. And um, she was like, you won't attack me out of respect. You say you won't attack me out of respect, but there's nothing respectful about you. She punches Dom in the face. And her and Becky, uh, Bria, sorry, Rhea and Becky then have a little bra uh, brawl, pull apart brawl. I thought it was a very, very a good segment mm. that was needed for this feud because Becky has just been distracted a little bit with Nia Jax and Liv Morgan. I think we needed this promo segment to remind everyone, no, this is the match that's happening at WrestleMania. Yeah, and also um, they've not been on SmackDown in, in the way that the other, you know, big mm. storyline has been. So they, they've really only had Raw and, and thus we really only have one more um show before their match i i personally feel like you can be a person who posts a picture of their ass on the internet and be a champion i think you can have both i i that's that's my belief look they are not mutually exclusive yeah, we, we, we all know the photo that's in becky's book uh yeah which i have now got a copy of and i'm looking forward to read it thank you very much for leading me on to what i was about to say next which is that as a massive fan of becky i really buy into her story and i think that's a part of her story real life story that you know that I left the wrestling industry. I had a crisis of confidence and I went away and I was a, a an air steward for a while. And, and then I was on Vikings and then Edge was the one who said, why don't I go for a little tryout? And then came back and forced her way into being the first, one of the first three women to main event at WrestleMania uh, when that was never going to be the, the promise. It was always supposed to be Charlotte and Brunda. Um, the, the, one of the things that we now know from Ronda Rousey that she regrets is that she never got to have that singles match with Becky, which, like, whatever you feel about Ronda Rousey, and I have very many feelings about Ronda Rousey, that is a that is an endorsement. And she's also right as well. Like, yeah. That, that, is, that should have been the main event of WrestleMania 35. It should have. They, they, but they shoehorned Charlotte into they, it. Because they promised Charlotte. Well, because the match they actually wanted to do was Charlotte versus Ronda. Like, mm. that's what they wanted to be the first main event of yeah. WrestleMania, but the crowd wanted something different. So WWE cut their notes off to spite their face. And so while Becky has the energy of someone who's always pushed, is constantly pushed, is maybe over pushed, I never feel that way with her because I know from my fandom i suppose how much of a fighter she is mm. how much how she's how the, the sacrifices she's made so when she talks then about her dad in the same way that like drew had that moment where he was talking about sacrifices with my family and connected with seth over becky and that was that was the example of bringing mm -hmm. the wife into the story when it makes sense bringing the family into this story in a way that it made sense we also don't it i i think i hope i'm not speaking out of turn here but i think it's quite rare that we see uh, someone beloved to us as fans go away and have a kid and then come back. That's another reason that it feels like it's, it's something that you can bring up here. Like, not only come back, but come back on this top level. Alexa Bliss is currently talking about wanting to get back to ring fitness. Mm -hmm. Carmella is as well. We're in a different era of women's wrestling than we were. Women were treated by the powers that be how the powers that be saw women. Just boobs on sticks that they can pass around. You can't grab that diva. That diva's for me kind of thing. And they would just put them on television and treat them as, as objects and then go away. And then they'd get to they'd get to 35 and then they'd go away kind of mm. thing. Um, Becky only, is, there's only so far you can get with training fitness models to be wrestlers. Re Becky is light years younger than like, you know, AJ Styles, Finn Balor even. Like she's she's uh, got so much more in the tank. I think Mickey James is someone who's got so much more in the tank as well. Like I think we're seeing a Natalia is in the best shape of her career. And I know I go on about Natalia a lot. I know it's a meme, but she is. Dan's Natalia segment. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Um, but yeah, I think, so I think it's a really interesting time to, uh, she's a really interesting figure in this time of wrestling, women wrestling. Asuka's a mother, we, we, but we don't, we didn't have Asuka and then lose Asuka to maternity leave. What weird word. I mean, I hate children. So I, yeah, I suppose it is parasites. Um, <laughs> But we, we, do you know, do you know what I'm saying? We don't see them go away do. and come back. Yeah, yeah. Men have babies all the time, not physically, but men have children. The male wrestlers have had children, but they don't take paternity leave. No, it's a very different experience. Um, it's we don't get it and also, the the thing that they do with their bodies when they carry a child and have a child is unreal to me. To then get back to a level of fitness where you can throw yourself around a wrestling ring in the way that Becky Lynch has been for the past four years, unreal. So I, I thought that this is this is a prime example of again using things wisely to make more of an impact i loved this segment i almost wish they hadn't got come to blows coming to blows was great 
I just wish that Rhea had run away a little bit and Becky emphasized her point by really beating down on Dom. I yeah. wanted to see Dom get his ass handed to him. What I liked about the segment the most is it was Rhea Ripley's realization that this is not a standard wrestling feud. Yes. Because she had her one line about the kid where she's just like, and mommy will always be like, I've got to say my catchphrase and yeah, your kid's going to call me mommy. And then Becky like responds with the way that she does. And Rhea's got this look on her face. that was like, "Uh Oh yeah, that's not whoopsie poopsie. That's not what this feud is. That's not what this match is. This match is about a lot more. I've got to start taking this seriously Mm. because she almost hasn't been because she's had this argument that, Becky's not taking this seriously because Becky's she's got her mind focused on Nia Jax and Liv Morgan yeah. and this that, and the other. So I thought it was a really interesting part to this. I did too. And here's like the pretty much the last thing we get to to talk about here. Um, but I I like the direction that we're going here. I wish this had happened three weeks ago. Mm. So what we had was Sammy was walking backstage and he was chatting with Chad Gable to like build off from the the argument that they'd had last week. And he was like, you know, I want to, I'm going to give you some advice. Here's some advice that you can take. And Sammy's like, you know, cool. Thank you for the advice. And he's like, I, I think here as well, I would say there's one slight problem with this segment is that it's Sammy Zayn versus Bronson Reed. And Gunther had said earlier in the night, huh, I don't think Sammy Zayn can beat Bronson Reed. And then they're like, man, this Bronson Reed's a tough test for Sammy. And then they come up in the lower third and it's like, beat Bronson Reed two weeks ago. That's an own goal. Yeah, isn't th- isn't that that's though? an own goal? Like, if you're trying to make this feel like it's an uphill challenge for Sami Zayn, mm. don't put him against someone he beat two weeks ago. Mm. You know what I mean? That is mad. Yeah. So I've written here. Or at the very least, don't tell us. <laughs> well, yeah, it's, I've literally written here. The story sort of works, but Sami did beat Bronson. Um, so Gunther comes out and he causes a distraction. He doesn't need to get physical in all of this. And Sammy does find himself momentarily distracted. Mm -hmm. But then in his moment, he gets all fired up. He is all set up for the halluva kick. And he turns to Gunther and he's like, this is you at WrestleMania. And unfortunately, that momentary distraction allowed Bronson Reed to take over. And Bronson hit the tsunami. And he got the win. Sammy was in his own head Mm. and sammy was then freaking out backstage he was so annoyed and chad comes up and he's a chad he's like look i i know exactly what gunther did i know exactly what happened out there i am to blame for this he got into my head and i allowed him to get into my head and chad was like and this is what i'm talking about it is not just a physical game with gunther it is a mental game if you cannot beat him mentally you will not be able to beat him i and if you're willing to change i can help you so we're now setting up Chad to be the trainer for Sami Zayn, mm. which is why I wish this had happened three weeks ago. So we could have developed this. We've only got one show to develop yeah. this Sami Zayn and Chad Gable relationship. relationship. I, if, we, if this happened three weeks ago, we could have even had a few matches where Sami is wrestling with Chad in his corner as his trainer. Or Sami's wrestling with Chad. Like yeah. Sami Sammy versus Chad in a training match. In a training match. Or like some video montages and yeah. things like that. Like I, I mean, think- hell, it's it's rocky <laughs> specifically it's rocky too well there you go yeah i mean i don't know which training i know the bit where he runs up the steps someone sammy's running up those steps we all thought it was going to be cody sammy's running up those steps someone had a proper go at me last week for because i was like well i feel like sammy's gonna win because they told us that this is rocky too and it was like luke's really going on about this rocky two thing i was like this because that's what wwe said like it's yeah. not my fault that wwe yeah. have set up that that's what the story is that's that's not on me mm. But I, I think this is a really, really good story. You just wish it had been sooner. I just wish it had happened sooner. I completely agree. I, I, I'm so into this idea. I, I almost forgot we were going to get him one week of it. I was like, oh, yeah. we'll get a couple of weeks of this business and the training thing to get him ready for Gunther. Now, you know, w- there was all that talk of Sly Stallone getting involved. In my head, he does the Mark Wahlberg thing. Or the Kevin Hart thing has the intro bit at the beginning where it's like, Hey, this is going to be great, everybody. It's WrestleMania in Philly. That's my slight impression. Flawless. Thank you so much. Um, <laughs> this is why I didn't get to drama school. So I, <laughs> I really... You're an actor, right? <laughs> Let's be honest. Um, I'm an actor in the same way that... That's too shady. I'll tell you. Like <laughs> um, the, the idea of Sammy like, not taking... I, I, okay, right. Running over time. I've come around to the idea of Sammy winning the belt. I initially didn't think it was even possible, Mm -hmm. but this kind of gave me the idea that, well, actually, maybe they will. And then there's a story letting go afterwards, which is why Gable's like, congratulations, you did it. I helped you. Can I have a shot? 
and Sammy's like, oh, I'm, I sort of, I'm not ready yet, kind of thing. Oh, go sod yourself, kind yeah. of thing. I, I'm into whether or not that might happen. I don't know. Like Gunther might well retain, and it'd be that whole thing of I'm Gunther. I'm so great. Like I, the, make sure, is that child cry? Yeah, I, I can't see the screen. Oh, sorry. There's a camera sorry, in the, the way. The camera's in the way. Sorry, oh, but sorry. Yeah. I, I know so much a bit. Sorry about it. Um, we need that revenge. Yeah, but the I, I also just love the idea of um, watching WrestleMania. And Sami Zayn, who wrestles with his heart and his throat, like he wrestles with um, PWG style, you know, has these these high spot moments, busts out a couple of Mac classics, like gives a German in the way that he doesn't, does a chaos theory, has an ankle lock on, like, you know, Chad Gable, who we know is this mastermind of pro wrestling. And I've seen it in matches with Gunther. I've seen it in matches with Ivar. I've seen it in matches with Akira Tozawa. Like, mm-hmm. he's, he, he, there's a reason he's Coach Gable. Teaches Sammy a few tricks. Sammy is then able to get the win because of the Gable method. Or it's still too much and Sammy didn't think with his head. And unfortunately, Gunther got the win. The fact that I don't know the answer to that yeah. is to its credit. Uh, well, anyway, I thought this was a a, a perfect five out of five yeah, show. Yeah, it was. It was, I, it, it was Thumbs up. incredible. Yeah, I thought this was an awesome, awesome episode of Raw. Uh, hats off to to everyone involved. Uh, and yeah, I thought it was was so so great. But anyway, we've got to have the remaining of your chats. We have a poll up in the live chat at the moment. Let us know what you thought of the show. Thumbs up, thumbs down, thumbs in the middle. Johnny All In said, "Please clarify something for me." I don't watch Raw on a regular basis. It's the fact that Priest still has the briefcase, guarantee a cash in at Mania, as I was under the assumption that the holder had until then to cash in. Sinomath is the best promo. He's got until Money in the Bank. There's a year-long contract. It, I think the way you're getting confused is that it used to be worn at WrestleMania. Exactly. So you yeah. had a year. Yeah, so he still has time post-WrestleMania, um, which, you know, hey, maybe they'll just keep weighing. Maybe he'll cash in at Money in the Bank. Yeah. Matt Hennessy said, The show rocks. It really shows how snack WWE is right now. You have your main eventers in Seth, Cody, Punk, Drew, Jay, uh, and Rock. And you have main event fighting talent in the IC tag title and the IC and tag titles like Gunther, Zayn, Judgment Day, plus Chad and Reed are being set up as future challenges for the IC title post main mania. Then you have a snack tag division with established teams like New Day and Awesome Truth. Go, established is a strong word for Awesome Truth. Um, plus you have teams like DIY that has been established and are having a great run now. I like the character work and the heel work with Karen, Karen Ray, it's really clicking. Rhea and Becky had an awesome promo and Jade and seems motivated. Credits with the sound and Triple H, this is awesome. Mm. Victoria says, Great Raw, Ricochet the King. Love seeing my print in action. CM Punk should have followed up on his Instagram post and kissed Cody Rhodes. <laughs> Started watching AEW recently and the big boy smooching is great. Not WWE related, but Hangman and Swerve should maybe lock lips. Hornier than I am. I mean, um, <laughs> just a, a need quick more one. kissing in wrestling. The, the uh, well, I mean, hard to agree. The, the Puma line they keep doing. Yeah. Do you think they know that they're making a reference or not? Oh, yes. It, it is very much intentional. I don't think Pat McAfee knows. I think, I think Michael Cole does. I gotta think. I don't think Pat's that thick. Pat, Ma- Pat, Pat McAfee made a P.D. Williams reference. Well, okay, there you go. So maybe, but he didn't know who Jordan Grace was. <laughs> well, she's a woman, so you know. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh, it's four twenty-three. Everybody. <laughs> Samuel Raja here said, Afternoon, Luke and Dan. The last line of Becky's promo was, We won't be the same after our match at Mania. Does that elude a double turn? Mm. Good do. Hard to turn Becky heel after that promo. I mean, though. that's it. But that's another thing. He had to back up again in a way that maybe go like, Oh, maybe she'll win it. And like, yeah. I, I'd kind of come around to Rhea's too hot to take the belt off her, but maybe she's not. And I do want to see a more competitive women's division. Yeah. And Rhea isn't going to give it to us. So. Uh, Garrick Vaughan said, outside of the hottest topic, I feel like Shinsuke is being, tra- uh, being treated like poor Bray R.I.P. <laughs> you got- <laughs> uh, well, cool, well-designed promos, but no wins to show for all the threats. Finally, fans coming to Philly should check out the Mark Out Club, a Philly-based wrestling group. The Mark Out Club, shout out. I, I, I just shout out things and hope that they aren't uh, secretly very toxic. Uh, but yeah, and I know what you're saying there. And I did think that. It's like, oh, well, here's Nakamura. He's not going to lose. Oh, he's not going to win, rather. A proper sneeze got caught in my nose there. I that's think it's gone now. That's devastating. I really yeah. hate when that happens. Uh, Goose Egg here said, I'm feeling that Seth is the fourth most important one in the night one tag match and the third most in his world title match, which is one on one. Punk and Drew, I feel like having a better program. What do you think? Mm. 
Kind of, yeah. Kind of, yeah. Although, I feel, I really feel like he's the third most important in the, in the tag match. Yeah. Roman, would, Roman's gone down a peg. I would agree with that. He's third most in the tag match, and he's third most in the world title <laughs> match. Space Viking said, WWE successfully building to three matches not on Mania. Cody versus Rock, Punk versus Drew, and Punk versus <laughs> Seth. But the thing is, and that was the other thing with Punk rattling off all those people. Oh, yeah, you've got time when his arm's bare. Oh, we sure have. Well, you've got hope anyway, haven't you? Because he made a glass. Real glass. <laughs> Cry me a river, mate. Uh, Aaron Hanrahan, look, I'm just, I, I, here is all I'm after. <laughs> I just want to see a lengthy run. Yeah, me too. I, 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 I just want to see him have a lengthy run. I hope that PC works out for him. It's just, I, I'm, I, I'm had enough of my stop, start, punk. Yeah. I, I, I need full on punk. That's what yeah. I, that is what I'm hopeful for. This time in, for next mania. That yeah. is what I'm hopeful for in 2024 when he comes back. Is we could just get healthy happy punk yeah we've got happy punk yes I, I, you saw that in spades oh I think. absolutely i you know and I've, I've said this on the show before but man leaving aew was the best thing that boy could have done because he looks happy mm. and he looks healthy in of himself arm notwithstanding mm. so i just want i want a long punk run agreed aaron hanrahan said sometimes you forget why you love wrestling and then you see a show that you'll never forget and you say this is why. Say his name if you have the balls. Holy S, that's why CM Punk is the best. This feels like the road to WrestleMania. I'll be there. Can't wait. Kevin said, Sammy is one of my favorite character workers. When we say wins and losses matter, it's not just for momentum, but also because of how winning and losing affects Sammy. Uh, he makes everything he does important. He's amazing and he has that lovable puppy face. Sammy is one of my favorite character workers. Oh, that's the same thing. But yeah, I agree, Kevin. Not actually, Tesco has been a member for 14 months in a row. Say, great balls of fire. What a program. Not the pay-per-view of the same name, but last night's Raw was the best in a while. Alpha Academy 4444 life. Uh, Gale Force 5 said, hi, guys. I feel like the Candice segments are all out of order. That's what you were saying. Mm -hmm. the, init the initial segment should have been either this week or next, and today's segment should have been last week. Doesn't help that her matches have become squashes to save time. The flip the first and third week. Rocky Five, but actually good. Have <laughs> I haven't seen any of them. Uh, what? I've seen Creed Three. Oh, <laughs> that's the one. That's the only one I've seen. And that's the one no one can really talk about anymore. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, whoa, mama. Very much in the mania mood now. Last night's expert display. Dwayne had finally won me over here. And I think you two's explanation of restraint is spot on. I'd say that was more Dan than it was myself. So would I. Actually, Cre credit there. to Dan there. <laughs> now all we need is Tegan Knox for the women's championship, baby. Not going to get a fight from me. Nope. Uh, Stephen Miller said, didn't get to watch last night. Saw the highlights. And boy, howdy, if they brought me background on The Rock's involvement. I'm also so... Um, I'm also am unsure what unhinged pipe bomb thing Ollie has planned for tomorrow, but Steiner Math is more iconic. Keep up the great work. I agree. Booking like a mark said, I get fans wanting an Avengers style conclusion to WrestleMania, but I'd rather see it like WrestleMania X. Brett was focused on Owen, but his big moment was defeating the man who screwed him over the year before. Nobody interfered. They just came out to celebrate. I do want that picture of Cody on their shoulders there. Yeah. Jam Beard has been a member for 28 months in a row. Said one question about the tag match. Will Rock actually be good in it? Because his last few matches have not been good. I do trust the other three men. That's the, that's the, point, the, point. Match. That's that's the point. point of a tag match. You can hide. Hey, Snooki got hit in the tag match. That's it. It's not, it's, it's not really just Rock and Cody versus... Uh, sorry, it's not just Seth and Cody versus Rock and Roman. It's actually Cody, Seth and Smoke versus rock roman and mirrors yes like that is where the magic of this match will come <laughs> whoa <laughs> sunny smoke and mirrors uh quote the raven 79 said my sister has a saying a woman ceases to be a woman once she closes her fist i think dom needs to be physically involved in Rhea versus becky the double standard that men can't attack women but women can attack men it's kind of hypocritical your thought thank you new day for finally saying your name is diy but there are two of you that doesn't make sense i've been saying that for years <laughs> I think it's do you know what quote the raven 79 you got my ultra chat of the day it's like that line from airheads the lone rangers there's three of you you're not exactly lone it is a very good point shouldn't you be the three rangers and then but i also quite like the response of like but you're not new you've been around for a long time surely that makes you the day like i don't um uh, i i that punch from becky to i could do with one of those my jaw clicks all the time i feel like it would knock me back into shape um I'd love to see. I'd love to see specifically Dominic Mysterio versus Becky Lynch. I do think that the the room is the 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 winds of change are there. 
now that wrestling is more athletic, mm -hmm. I'd like to see a little bit of intergender spicing it up a little bit. Back in the day, I can understand why you wouldn't. The women wrestlers were not. They were like fitness bottles and whatever. And it was a lot punch kick, punch kick. I'm into a bit more. Yeah. Red Eye, Cody is slowly turning heel for me. He has three shows before Mania. If he doesn't come out and say, guys, two people have won Royal Rumble. I'm giving the other main event to Bailey, then I'm done. Um, this is from our mod, James. Uh, I 1000% agree. I'm sick to death with the bloodline hogging both nights of Mania again. Book the women as the main event too. I think this is a rare example though, where because normally you know me, I'm on the same train, but... <sighs> This, this is so this is so rare yeah look I, I i've said it on this podcast many times over but and i'm gonna disagree with red eye and with our mod james here the hottest thing should be the main event yeah last year the hottest thing was sammy and ko against the usos it's nothing against rhea and charlotte that was a hotter program yeah the this, match was great. The match was Charlotte. great. It, it was. I'd argue it's actually better than the tank match, but the tank match was the hotter thing. The emotional. And it, and it was the emotional match, and it should have been the main event. This should be the main event of the show because it is, and like it's it's a you know it, it's certainly something to say about Triple H's booking. EO and Bailey doesn't feel like a hot program at anymore. The moment. Yeah, it, did it a, feels a while ago. It feels real mid card. Yeah, there's something actually. I, I didn't say this on the SmackDown podcast, um, but I've. Do you know one of my real tiny gripes I've currently got at the moment? Mm. Uh, and this is about the disrespect to Bailey. How is Cody introduced whenever he comes out? The winner of the 2023 and 2024 Royal Rumble. How's Bailey introduced when she comes out? Couldn't tell you. Bailey. This is like from San Diego, California. Bailey. She's from San, San Jose for a start. It's okay. Place. From, San, from San Jose, California. It's the same place. From San Jose, California. They're miles apart. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're not. They're down the road. <laughs> Um, from, okay, from San Jose, California. Point taken, though. Bailey. Yeah. Where, where's her? The yeah. winner of the 2024 Women's Royal I do Rumble. agree. I it's, also... It's, like, it's treated like a mid-card. But this is the point. that I, to, It brings me back to what I was saying earlier on, which is, if that's a problem, that's your fault. Of course it is. You've got to do better. So, yeah. this year, this is what's supposed to be the main event. But, at the moment, like, but with Bailey and EO as the example, there are, like... Seth and Drew now feels like a hotter program than that because yeah. of Punk's involvement. Becky and Rhea feels like a hotter program than Bailey and Io. Mm -hmm. So if they were on like either of those nights, like there's three matches that are going to yeah. be main eventing over them. I mean, the, the, this is also the idea of the opening match is just as is important, but when you've got four titles and four main events in theory. Also, like last year was a, t a tag match main event in WrestleMania for the tag yeah. titles. Wow, wild. I, there, there, is, there is just something of ultimately it comes back to who is given the opportunities and and I, I i agree wholeheartedly that the best story the most emotional story should be the main event i also believe wholeheartedly that um opportunity uh is only there for the taking if you're given the chance to take absolutely, it absolutely yeah Roach Senpai said, K Faber side, if your boss gets physical with you, doesn't that call for a legal invest intervention with your supervisor? Um with you if the, the, your supervisor fought with you and the one that slapped you first with the millions and millions of witnesses oh it's pro wrestling yeah think about it that's the yeah. joy i mean otherwise the, the police would be involved patrick eddie said hey guys luke i'm the person who sent you the cameo about a punk heel turn just wanted to say that i've never been in the camp of people being upset at punk for returning but when i see him uh, see him with that wwe cubs belt backstage i did say what a sell <laughs> yeah yeah he did look like uh, corporate the, punk yeah the make-a-wish kid who got invited to yeah. uh, to an episode of raw here's a belt for you pal um pika pig said hello wrestle talk hope you guys have been having a great day glad to be listening to you guys on mine and pete's birthday also believe in you luke you can win the monday night war um apparently we, have we got patron shout outs apparently so yeah oh i'm so sorry i i did actually go and check um but i uh I, I clearly was read the dates wrong. Yeah. My apologies. We'll do patron shout outs in a little bit. But first, Swifty Whiskey has donated a hundred dollars. Thank you so much. Hun it's Whoa, very kind. that's so so kind. Thank you so much. He said, "Hi, Wrestle Talk crew. I just wanted to uh, say thank you for bringing me some joy this morning. I'm currently quarantining with my two year old after getting the stomach flu, oh. so my one week old and wife recovering from a C section don't get sick. Jam that jam, Wrestle Talk. Big sacrifice, but one ultimately very worth it. Yeah, uh, get better soon. I hope the newborn is okay as well. Absolutely, yeah. And, and of course, 
mum. And mum as well, yeah. <laughs> Good. I mean, just no sell mum who's had a C section. That's pretty yeah. big. <laughs> yeah. Best best of luck to all to all the four of you. And uh, thank you so much for checking us out today. And thank you so much for joining in the fun. Uh, Brian here says, per Ollie, I reached out a couple of weeks ago to support about references for anthropological research, and I'm worried my emails are being filtered to spam because I haven't had anything back. Is there another route to connect about this? It'll be just be in Ollie's long list of things that he needs to do for the day. So don't worry. He will have been sent it. Uh, Chris here said, "Hi guys, great roll last night. But you know who would make it better? Uh, who would make it better? Uh, Steiner doing maths or Alexa Bliss returning? And then you could bring her back, Ram, to build her up for SummerSlam in Ohio, where she'd get a CM Punk level pop if she came back there. Is she from there? Think so." Oh, well, that would make sense then. Uh, Josh said, Hi guys, loving the content. Uh, following the channel as usual, especially the TLC videos is my personal favorite. Anyway, quick question regarding After Mania. Likely Cody is winning. Who do you see as a likely competitor for the WWE Championship? I think uh, it's going to be interesting how things go down because if Cody is winning that belt, brand split LOL, we are going to have two champions on the same show. So uh, how quick is the draft coming about? If there's going to be one. Yeah, and now there are two GMs. So Sean was talking about this on the Fightful post show. Mm. He said the last time they did a draft earlier in the year, it caused nothing but problems because they drafted people to certain brands. And then Fox were like, we don't want these people. We want those people. Right. So they had to sort of then do lots of switching around and hey, moving I mean, people back and forth. And USA were like, I don't want these people. I want those people. Mm. So it actually makes more sense to do a draft once you've gone to your new networks right so once you've gone to netflix once you've gone to smackdown's gone to usa that's when you kind of do the draft because that's when you have least political issues to deal with except that's functionally not how the show's gonna work well, can you probably, probably just move to smackdown well usa like sorry we want him i wanted him <laughs> well, to I, use that point yeah but like it's it's the smack is the champion of smackdown so he'll just Stop go there the network. i mean do you know what do you know what cody will do be on both shows yeah he's a workaholic he'll just be on but also shows. then it's not like there's going to be there's still going to be two networks because it's going to be USA versus Netflix so this, that, that argument's still going to be there no but the point is that like it's you just wait until you've got everyone on the shows and then you can like okay who do you want who do you guys want and then you right. can deal with it right and uh Eddie E has become a member, as has Ash for Nash, and has as Brandon Snyder. Thank you all so much. Thank you, um, let's have a quick check about these Patreon shoutouts that I did miss. My apologies. Head on over to patreon.com forward slash rest talk. Loads of great content, including this coming Wednesday, tomorrow, in fact, Wrestle Talk Extra, mine and Ollie's review of 2014's Payback. Featuring Blue Teaster is the biggest biggest thing on that show. And an excellent last man standing match with Cena and Wyatt as we look towards the breakup of The Shield Part 3. If you're one of our $25 and above Patreon pledge channels, you get your name read out on the show like these fine folk. Tony Chabroni. Trev Dog 316. Commentator of the Century, Vince Phillips. Willie Biggie Singleton. The Lumberjack, XX Logs XX. The Diamond, Rob Grass. Top Flight, Jared Martin. Hannah A, baby. Enter Sam, man. Sam Register. Hello there, Obi-Wan Kenobi. Hello there. And the Gaelic Storm, Heather Murphy. Thank you all so much for being our wonderful backers. That is your Hall of Fame class for uh, Tuesday, the 26th of March, 2024. Let's end this poll. Unsurprisingly, it was quite a popular one. Goodness gracious. It is 93% thumbs up with 4% thumbs in the middle. Who pressed thumbs down? Yeah. <laughs> All right, Tony, get out of the chat, will you? Pressing your thumbs down. Your day's Thursday. Yeah, come on, bud. You can come into the chat and press your thumbs up then, but don't be pressing thumbs down. Don't ruin our mood here. There's a great result there. 94%. Yeah. All right, that is it, though. That's it for this show. Uh, apologies we've gone that long. It was a big show. Sorry to our moderators. But thank you to all of you that have stuck around and checked this one out. Please do press the subscribe button. Give us a little thumbs up. Leave a comment down below with what you thought of the show. We will see you on Thursday for the AEW Dynamite Review, which is a stacked old card. And I cannot wait. Osprey versus Takeshita. Yeah, I'll take that. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. I'm really, really excited. What's that? It's going to be Swerve. Swerve's in action? Yeah, I'll take that. Very, very excited. We will see you on Thursday. Take care, everyone. I've been Luke and DAD. That has been Dan Layton. Jam that jam. <laughs>